Hello again. We continue with our health focus and we're looking at eating disorders today. And let's take the discussion further now with forensic and clinical psychologist Dr. Giada Del Fabra joining us. Uh, Doc, good morning and thanks so much for your time this morning. So you've heard much of the discussions we've had already this morning. And where do you fit in? Where do psychologists fit in? Because we understand that this becomes a psychiatric issue at some point. The diagnosis mm -hmm. happens there. Where do you fit in when it comes to diagnosing and treating as well? So thank you very much for having me as part of a very important and crucial discussion. Um, uh, so where psychologists would fit in is part of definitely part of a multidisciplinary treatment team, uh, which would involve psychiatrists and doctors and you know medical professionals. Um, but really, it's about trying to work on the cognitions and behaviours that have become so entrenched around the eating disorder behaviour. Uh, so just picking up on what Dr. Cox said in the sense that it's become so internalized, sort of mm. that self-image and those that process and those patterns, it becomes quite crucial to use a lot of sort of cognitive and behavioral techniques to, to try and interrupt that. Um, in addition to working a bit also on self-esteem and um, what we find is really difficulty sometimes in emotional regulation. So the eating behavior is often being used to, to manage um, difficult feelings. Um, mm. We can, I think often what happens with uh, eating disorders is that a family intervention, especially with yeah. with sort of younger younger patients, is essential. So a psychologist would also be involved in coordinating that in terms of coordinating family therapy sessions with the family of, of the patient. What have you noticed in your experience and those who you've treated for, for eating disorders? And we spoke of, of causes earlier with Dr. Temer, but I'd like to know from your side in, in sitting and chatting and trying to get to the root of the problem, what, what are the common reasons? What are the common reasons that, that, that someone might resort to, 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 to doing this to themselves and their bodies? So, I mean, there's definitely the social component around uh, sort of ideals around body image and all of that. But what you find is the more intrapsychic component. So what's going on inside of someone is it's very much about control. And uh, for someone whose world feels very out of control, it can be a mechanism in which they can exert some sort of control over their lives. Um, what we also find is in certain situations, it's, I mean, from sort of a systemic approach, it's often very much sometimes with enmeshed families where the individual concerned is really struggling to differentiate themselves in some way mm -hmm. from sort of poor boundaries, very intrusive um, caregiving. Uh, but, and they're quite different. So when you've got anorexia, it's very much about um, sort of there's, there's a goal and you often find the personality type with anorexia um, is very much sort of what you call the type A personality, so mm. achievement orientated, per mm. perfectionistic. So the weight loss becomes just a goal that needs to be pursued and yeah. it's never enough. And there's a validation in achieving mm. that. Mm. Um, whereas with bulimia, it's slightly different. There's a lot of sort of shame and guilt associated with it. And, and those individuals can often maintain what seems quite a normal um, weight uh, and sometimes even sort of a, um, towards the, the kind of upper end of the continuum in terms of their weight, but there's something around uh, self-esteem, which is around um, needing to shame themselves in some way by engaging in a behavior that is really, um, you know, by, by kind of anyone's objective standards, quite, um, quite shameful. Yeah. Okay, so various behaviors could, 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 could be an indicator of this. And, you know, Doc, what, what, what have you seen in, in terms of how this actually changes someone's life in, in, in terms of everyday life? I mean, are people sort of missing work? Are they underperforming? Are, are kids underperforming at school or not performing at all? What have you noticed in terms of the impact, as secretive as they think they're being, what are the things that are actually happening out there outside of themselves? So it's quite mixed. Um, with the anorexic, um, obviously they can go for a while in terms of being quite managing their life very well in other areas. So in terms of achieving at school and um, managing to to maintain some level of functioning, uh, it's it's when sort of it tips over and gets to a more dysfunctional area where you will find the obsessiveness that comes in. Mm. So what happens is one's life becomes completely focused on on managing one's eating. So they'll avoid going out, won't socialize, um, definitely make social arrangements that are not around meals, um, you know, become quite quite withdrawn. Uh, but functioning will deteriorate. I mean, 
I think especially if you look at, and I mean, the other experts have commented on that uh, and, and, and probably are more equipped to do so, but in terms of the cognitive uh, impact of an eating disorder, just in terms of not being able to function properly, memory, attention, concentration, mm -hmm. all of those things, those will definitely impact functioning in, at work, um, at school, and, and those are definitely things to look out for. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you get through to someone who, you know, is, is you, you're looking at them and you're seeing somebody who is terribly undernourished, malnourished, needs help, needs to have, you know, start eating properly. Mm -hmm. They look in the mirror and they see somebody three times their size. Where do you even begin with that? It's so, so difficult. Um, and I think Dr. Koch touched on this also mm -hmm. in terms of saying how intractable it is. It's internalized. And, uh, and so you are really trying to reshape someone's self-image. Um, so it would be very much around starting quite practically around interrupting the thought processes that come into play that trigger the behaviors. Uh, but really trying to shift um, this idea of health mm, so mm. That, that it's about getting a healthy body, it's about having a healthy mind, a healthy psyche. And I think it's, it's, it's very much a, a complex process around where you're working on the practical behaviors that need to take yeah. place, but also looking at uh, working on self-esteem as well and, yeah. and where the areas of validation lie. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a very um, kind of multi-pronged mm. approach mm. that one would need to take to, so, to sort of get through in some way. So what's your advice, Doc? You know, as, as, as many of us, especially now during this time, we're in level one, the holidays are coming up, some of us mm -hmm. will take advantage of that. That whole idea of this, the summer body that we're supposed yeah. to be working on, you know, some, some people might be obsessing. I'm a little bit guilty of that. I've been running extra <laughs> on the treadmill, you know, doing a juice here and a juice there and all of that. But, you know, just, just your advice as to what are the questions um, we should be asking ourselves when that, that, that would, might give us an indication as to whether we have now taken this too far. What are the signs that we might recognize within ourselves and maybe our loved ones as well? Uh, sure. and, 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 I'm, and I'm making this time because that's probably what's happening now, but any time of the year. Mm, but we're most likely to be, to be focusing on it now at this point as well. Sure. And I mean, I think it's also linked, if we look at the, the fact that it's control over and, and stress management sometimes, I mean, if you look at this time of year also, we're heading into exams. So a lot of children at school will be, their anxiety will be up. So if there is a vulnerability for eating disorders, it's also around times where other stresses will come into one's life. But I think it's really about asking yourself, how obsessed am I becoming about this? How much do I think about it? How much do I plan my life around meals? How much do I feel anxious and ashamed and guilty after maybe overindulging? How much am I using food to manage my feelings? Um, and it's about really just taking a long, hard look about, uh, at that. Uh, in terms of watching your loved ones, just notice sort of if there's been significant weight loss, um, if there is sort of withdrawal, if there's an obsessiveness around food or exercise, um, that, that, you know, an increase about what would consider, what one would consider normal or, or healthy. Um, and I think that's the impact, is just, it, that's also a key question, is to look and see, am I focused on this because it's good for me? Um, and I guess, you know, that's debatable, but good for me from a health perspective, mm -hmm. from sort of a medical-based evidence-based, dietitian-based aspect, or am I doing this uh, for other reasons? Mm. Um, and I think just the last word, Doc, just for you know, people to accept as human beings that our bodies are going to change. They change at different mm. stages in our lives, and acceptance being a big part of that, yeah. I would imagine. Definitely, and, and I think it's a, it's a vehicle that speaks to how we can practice acceptance for ourselves in all ways. Uh, you know, we can be so hard on ourselves in terms of who we are in the world, and I mean, I think that sort of an eating disorder is a manifestation of that. And it becomes a very practical, tangible way in which one can control that and hurt oneself too, um, in terms of punishing oneself for being not good enough. And I think it's really important to, to just, yeah, accept that the, the key is to sort of get to the end of one's life yeah. with, uh, with working, working as well as one can and as yeah. effectively as one can as a human and to, to keep that in mind. Right, thanks very much, uh, Dr. Jada Del Fabra. There, that's uh, it is a long road. It is a tricky road as well, especially when it is a loved one that you are going to be looking at, and yourself as well. Some of us are going through it and not even realizing that we are teetering on the very fine line there. Still on the way, I'll be speaking to psychologist Devalt Lo. He works uh, with uh, the uh, Kiso Montrose Manor Clinic and Eating Disorder Treatment Centre. We'll hear from him how it is they go about doing this.